Hi, I'm Sara and welcome to Hen Corner. Today we're making a vegetable lasagna and in, um, in line with what I'm always saying, we need to use the food in the fridge in the order that it needs to be eating, eaten. So if some of these vegetables look a bit sad, it's absolutely fine because they are gonna shine in this dish. Um, and let's make sure that the new vegetables in nice, cres crisp and fresh are the things that we eat once we've eaten up the older things first. So we're gonna make a vegetable lasagna. Lasagna is made um, with two um, main dishes that come together. So we're gonna make a vegetable tomato sauce and we're going to make a cheese sauce and then we're going to layer it with ready-made pasta sheets, lasagna sheets and then bake it in the oven. It's quite straightforward and um, I really hope you're going to have a go at this as well and let's get going. We're going to start off by sautéing in the pan onions and garlic and leek and celery. Then we're going to add some carrots, then we're going to add some red pepper, I've only got half a red pepper, that's all we're going to manage with. Then I've got a courgette that we're going to use um, and once that's simmering, uh, sorry, it's sautéing nicely, we're then going to add some seasoning, we're going to put uh, the chopped, uh, chopped tomatoes in, chopped, chopped in tomatoes, we're going to throw in some um, nice red lentils um, which will give a nice um, protein element to the dish and will also help thicken the sauce. Um, we can adjust the seasoning with tomato puree, chili flakes, mixed herbs. Um, and once that's simmering down nicely, the, the rich tomato sauce with all the extra hidden vegetables in will then make the cheese sauce and get ready to start layering. So I'm going to cut up the onion. And with a bit of olive oil in the pan. We can pop the onions in and start those sautéing on the hob. We'll then do a few cloves of garlic. Now it does depend how many of you like garlic. I like quite a bit of garlic as does my family. So we're going to put a few cloves of garlic in. Don't forget with garlic you don't want to eat the papery outer casing. So I just cut the bases off where the roots would grow. And I can skim all this away. I keep my debris ready for composting on a paper towel, which means that I can just pick it all up and pop it straight into the compost bin when I finished with it. And that can all be added to the pan with the onions. Next to get in the pan is the celery and the leaves can go in as well. It's just like adding a bit of extra fresh herb. Next is the leek. If you open the leek and you see that there's some dirt in there, it's very easy just to run it under the tap and that rinses out any dirt that's in the leek. And leeks will only have dirt in because they grow up from under the soil, through the soil, and as they grow up, there will be naturally bits of soil caught in between the leaves. But these look nice and clean, so we're absolutely fine. This is where I'm going to add a bit of dried mixed herbs and some chilli flakes. Next, we're going to go for the courgette. Now, depending on who you're cooking for, you might want to go for a finer dice if you've got children that like to pick the vegetables out. Or you might want to keep it chunky for people who like to know that there's a good variety of veg in their dish. I'm going to go to the somewhere in between. I like every fork full of food to have a little bit of each of the ingredients in the dish. So every fork full includes every, everything you've put in. So in the pan now I've got onions, garlic, celery, courgette, all cooking down a little bit of olive oil with salt and pepper, dried mixed herbs and some dried chilli flakes. Using old, slightly older vegetables in a sauce like this is brilliant. And this sauce that we're making can just be a pasta sauce in itself or you could throw some um, chicken kidney beans in and adjust the seasoning with a little bit more 
um, chili flakes and some cumin spice and you'll have a vegetarian chili so I can't really call it chili con carne because the carne is is the meat bit but you can have a chili con vegetables probably not <laughs> probably not the right terminology and then the pepper So to finish off the sauce that's in the pan, just before we leave it to simmer, we need to add two tins of tomatoes. Next into the pan, we're gonna put our stock cube, and then we're gonna put in, once we've stirred it through, we want to make sure the stock cube is dissolved in the sauce. We're gonna put in our um, red lentils, which will just cook nicely. While the sauce is cooking, whilst it's getting ready and coming up to the right temperature, I'm gonna show you how to make the cheese sauce. Very straightforward. I know you can buy packets of cheese sauce, you can buy powdered cheese sauce, you can buy jars of cheese sauce, but it is so simple and I'm pretty sure you will already have the ingredients at home. In a saucepan, we're going to put a spoon of butter or um, margarine. Into that, um, into the melted butter or margarine, we're going to sprinkle some flour. Now, this is just plain flour, um, just use whatever flour you've got. This is actually bread flour because I've got kilos of the stuff. But just sprinkle on some flour. Um, you probably need a tablespoon or so. Um, and then as the butter is, is um, taking in the flour, the flour is absorbing the butter, um, you want to add some milk, mixing all the time as you go. And this is called a roux sauce. So it's um, butter or margarine, flour and milk. And then we can start adding, adding some flavorings. We're going to put some black pepper, we're going to put some nutmeg, and we're going to put a teaspoon of mustard to give it a bit of a kick. And then we're gonna add our cheese. Now the cheese, if you want to grate it, you can grate it but it's all going to melt down anyway. So I'm just gonna cut it into cubes and it saves me washing up a grater. So the last things I'm going to add into the tomato sauce are the red lentils, stir them in. And we're gonna put a spoon of tomato puree. If you haven't got any tomato puree, you can just add a bit of sugar. It's just to bring the flavors together, a bit of richness, so it's tomato puree. So, and butter is melted, so it's now time to sprinkle on some flour. That's about one tablespoon, that's about two. In fact, I'm gonna go for three tablespoons there because I wanna make quite a nice big lasagna. And you can see that very quickly, the flour absorbs the butter, so we need to get the milk in before it starts catching on the bottom. A little bit at a time with the milk because you want the sauce to thicken gradually rather than ending up with thick lumps and then trying to water it down. And then more milk. So just whilst the cheese sauce is starting to, to warm up again after adding the extra milk, we can put some seasonings in. Fresh ground black pepper. Freshly ground nutmeg. Whoa. <laughs> and that spoon of mustard that gives it a little bit of piquant warmth. There's not much left in that jar. Once your white sauce is cooked through and you've got it to the right consistency, you've added enough milk, we want it quite runny because it's going to bake and when it's baking it's going to lose more moisture and because we're baking it with dried pasta, the dried pasta will be absorbing water. Same with the red tomato sauce, we want that to be, the vegetable sauce, we want that to be quite wet as well um, because we need to have the moisture there that the lasagna is actually going to cook in. If you think of um, dried pasta that you boil on the hob, that's boiled in water so the sauce is 
need to be quite wet to allow it to bake well together and to, um, to be able to, to cook the pasta through, cook the dried pasta through. Once your white sauce is of the right consistency and it's brought up to temperature again and it's started to simmer to show that it's cooking and the flour's cooked out, it's not going to get any thicker, then we can add the cheese chunks, which again will stir for them to melt in. So stir the white sauce until the cheese is melted in nicely. And then with the red sauce, we're just going to give it another stir. You can see it's thickening up really nicely. And it's thickening up for two reasons. One, the water is evaporating. And two, the lentils are absorbing moisture. So the lentils make it, um, make it nice and thick and rich, as well as adding the protein to the dish. So I'm going to taste the, um, the vegetable sauce to see whether we need to add any other flavours to it. Let's taste it. Mm. It's a bit hot, but it's really nice. Um, it doesn't taste too spicy, but you have got a warmth coming through from the chilies. And do you know, I'm actually not going to add anything to it. I always cook, I always taste my food as I'm cooking it and sometimes think, oh, it needs a bit more salt or it needs a bit more chilli or it needs a bit of sugar or maybe a splash of wine or grate some cheese in. Um, I, I always taste some going, but do you know what? That's pretty good. So um, we're going to make sure that the cheese is stirred through. So that's a nice smooth cheese sauce. I'm going to turn the temperature down on the vegetable sauce and we're very soon, we're very nearly ready to start laying up the lasagna, having it ready to bake. So we now have our two sauces. We have our tomato sauce here. Oh, it's hot. And our cheese sauce here. And we have our dried lasagna sheets here. And we're going to um, layer it up in this oven proof dish. Now this size dish I think is going to feed oh at least six people. Uh, we always start with the tomato sauce on the base. So layer it out followed by the cheese sauce. It goes tomato sauce, cheese sauce, pasta sheets. And if you've got some gaps around the edge, you can break a sheet in half and fill in those gaps. And then keep layering it up. I will smooth around the top layer because I don't want to have dried pasta, too much dried pasta, poking out at the top of the sauce because that will just go crispy, it won't cook, it will just crispen up in the oven. Heavy last bit of sauce. Then smooth the sauce around so that you've got a bit all the way over the top. And this is now ready to go into the oven at 180 degrees for 40 minutes. And as it cooks through and goes crispy on the top, you'll have a lovely Italian dish that's meat free, using up the old vegetables that you've got in the fridge. And that's going to feed at least six people. Make each other side salad, maybe some garlic bread to go on the side. And you've got a really lovely evening meal ahead of you. Well, I'm looking forward to baking this for tea later on tonight. This can go in the fridge for a bit if I want to and bake it when I'm ready. You can even be frozen at this stage before cooking and then you can just defrost it um, in the fridge overnight and, and cook it in the oven, bake it in the oven when you're ready for it. But I'm looking forward for the, to this for dinner tonight. Um, I'm going to go and spend a couple of hours down the allotment now and um, looking forward to having this for supper. So I see you next time. Do let us know if you make this. Let us know if you've got any questions. We'll put all the information down in the description box and we'll see you next time. Join us on the journey.